Let's look at America internally, the great immigration period. Aside from focusing on advanced uh, military power, there were a lot of people that made America a strong and powerful nation. Now, the Ellis Island, this was the gateway to the New World. Here you would see immigrants from Europe coming in here um, on, on boats that, are, that were sailing from Europe. And uh, in uh, 1868, the Berlin Game Treaty was signed. For, this allowed for um, Chinese immigrants to come to the U.S. Why? Because there was a need, despite the fact that there was a uh, civil war, America was constructing itself. Um, it, it created the first transcontinental railroad that would uh, connect the West and the East. And they needed Chinese immigrants and all the other immigrants, uh, massive labor to do this. So the reputation of Chinese was they built the, uh, the Great Wall of China, right? So, so they thought like, oh, they should be good in doing this infrastructure work. That's why the Chinese came here. And this is also the reason why there is a, there's a Chinatown almost in every part of America. It's because the Chinese were constructing the railroad. Um, between 1863 and 1869. So when America was growing, it needed a lot of labor. Uh, the people who were constructing the railroad, which paved way for massive industrialization in the subsequent years, they were the black slaves, they were the Chinese, they were the Irish um, people. And the, the most, the people who had who had lesser pay was the Chinese cents as compared to the Irish who were, that's, that was how it was. Now, the conflict of America's great labor needs and the assimilation or the acceptance problems have, has always been around. So right after the transcontinental railroad was finished, there were so many Chinese people here. And so it created a lot of uh, riots because, you know, um, they didn't want the Chinese around. So a, a law was passed. The first law that was really officially banning a, a group of people, the Chinese Exclusion Act, which was passed on May 2, 1882. We Filipinos were also discriminated against. And I would have personal knowledge on this because my grandfather, my mom's uh, grandfather, and uh, her uncle, also uh, another relative, had experienced all this uh, discrimination from uh, getting into hotels or restaurants. Absolutely no Filipinos around. The Filipinos, by the way, as uh, we know, were um, transported to the U.S. to become farm workers or uh, sakadas. They uh, worked in Hawaii and in uh, California to plant um, asparagus, pineapple, and all that. So you see the huge labor requirement they ship um, people from all over the world so that they would work in farms at this period and then um, the conflict would immediately be like the acceptance of these workers into the fabric of uh, american society during the depression there was a repatriation act repatriation is just like a sweeter name than deportation so the Filipinos were repatriated in 1935 by President Roosevelt. And there was also a Mexican Repatriation Act. And as usual, for a long time, there was bias. There was um, racial discrimination against Black. There was slavery because since um, the, the onset of uh, colonialism in the U.S., they have started off as slaves and there was segregation. And this, this snowballed into the civil rights movement in the post-modern or post-war America. So you see that uh, after needing a lot of big labor, there, will, there is always a uh, relationship between economic needs of the U.S. and immigration. And you will see the pattern of the repatriation acts. Now the La Bracera program for Mexico, this is agriculture. And so um, they need farmers to you know, to work on the farm so that 
there'll be enough food supply in industrial America. Now, this was stopped in 1964. In 1965, the Hard Seller Immigration Act was enacted. This was signed by uh, President uh, Lyndon Jan Johnson in New York. And uh, this created uh, the inflow of unprecedented numbers of immigrants from Asia, Mexico, Latin America, and uh, non-Western countries. So between 1965 and 2000, Mexicans comprised the highest of immigrants. Although there is a noted um, decline of the number of immigrants coming from Mexico, they still compose the highest number and followed by the Chinese, Indians, and Filipinos. So Filipinos, we have a big number. We are a force to reckon with. Now the Heart Seller Act was a result of America's um, sort, so to speak, championing of democracy. So many other countries want to come here as during the Cold War between US and USSR, they sought political asylum here and economic um, prosperity here. So the uh, leaders, notably um, President Kennedy, saw that we have to open, America must open its doors to other races other than just the Anglo-Saxon, the white. Because prior to 1965, the Immigration Act was, uh, was limited to the Northern Europeans only. Uh, who were admitted were Germans, British, and uh, Irish. But the backstory of that actually is America needs a lot of people to, to make its economy run. That's why herds and herds of people have to be um, admitted here. As, as mentioned, there is a, a correlation of immigration and economic need of the US. Um, at this point, President Trump is worried and all the other um the white race the conservative whites are worried that maybe eventually the ones to dominate the landscape of the u.s would no longer be the white people like they were looking at the population um pro projection uh, mexicans will have really a boost of uh, population as well as asians so but is there really a reason to be afraid? Is there really a reason to be insecure of the influx of uh, non-white immigrants in America? With that, I leave um, this uh, presentation for our discussion. And perhaps you can share your insights, your critique, so that we have a perspective of uh, our own history here in the US. That we, not, we are not going to be erased we are going to have our voices heard. So thank you so much. And now let us go into our discussion. Thank you, Mary.